Day one this year was um, a really magical experience. For us, like a lot of secondary schools in Tameside, we had just year seven in initially for the first day, largely because they'd missed out on a lot of transition from the end of last year. So they had a, a fabulous day with the building all to themselves, and they got to have a look round and do all the things that we would normally do for transition, but also learn the new adaptations because of course we are running in a COVID secure way. Um, and then of course, over the next two days, we got all of the other year groups back. So the Friday of the first week, when we had all the year groups back in, um, I can't tell you how special it felt um, and how proud I was uh, of the staff and of the students um, who came back to school with huge smiles, with absolute willingness to, to learn to adapt and to follow the new systems. Um, and it was just fabulous to see them um, getting on and, and, and doing what children should do. So yeah, it's been a, a joyous experience, not easy, but joyous. Over summer, how much hard work for yourself, staff, all the uh, caretaking team, putting into place all those procedures and safety procedures for school children coming back? Yes, it was, it was different in the sense that um, it, it didn't feel for some of us as though there had been a, a sort of break really. If you, if you think about, and I'm sure everybody will have seen all of the work that went into GCSE results this year, really from the end of the six weeks holidays all the way through to school starting, there were a lot of staff in school making sure that we were doing the best for our leavers last year, for our new starters this year and for all of our staff. So you're quite right to note the incredible hard work of our site staff, all of the support staff who were working the phones and making sure people knew what was happening, one-way systems going down, making sure the cleaning routines were in place. Um, it was it was hard. It was hard to get ready, um, and there was an awful lot to think about. Even things that perhaps often we don't talk about, getting a timetable ready for this year has been completely different from in previous years. So it was tough. Um, but what I can say, certainly for this school, and I know for um, all the schools in Tameside, um, everybody wanted to make that day work. So all of that hard work was absolutely worth it. So for things like PE and drama, can they still access a full curriculum? Or uh, are they, although it will be slightly different, I guess, for them being socially distanced or uh, yeah. distanced from a, a teacher anyway? <clears throat> Yeah, so what we've done um, is for um, traditional classroom lessons, we have your typical classroom layout, and those lessons continue in a very similar way to the way that they've always run, and the children see familiarity in that. But you're quite right, things that need equipment, so technology, PE, um, food technology, for example, art, those lessons have to be run in quite a different way. Now, we are delivering a full curriculum, but we have had to make some adaptations. So PE, for example, we don't have contact sports. We've started with athletics and individual sporting activity, but we have been able to run it. The weight, I think, for the staff is on making sure that if they use any equipment, it has to be stored for a period of time before it can be used again, or it has to be disinfected. There are lots of rules that say that if you are going to use equipment in your lesson, this is the correct way of managing it. What we've done is start with art and PE as our pilot areas, test all our processes to make sure that we can keep equipment clean, monitored and managed, and we're rolling that out into other subject areas, drama, music, anything where there's performance or, um, or the need to interact is slightly different from your average classroom lesson, yeah. Now, it is inevitable, I guess, that to the size of a school like this, um, that there are going to be cases of COVID. What's the school process for dealing with that? Um, well, the first thing to say is that um, we're very lucky here in Tameside in that there is a very strong um, public health support for us. And actually, I found that also with some of the Greater Manchester processes as well. So um, even before we started, we had a very clear set of contacts, who to go to for advice, when, because it was never an if, when those cases begin to emerge. So speaking for um, us here at Great Academy Ashton, we um, have had six cases since... Uh, school returned and each one of those um, has been worked through with advice from our partners. Um, the first thing that we do is ascertain um, the first time that symptoms presented for example whether or not it was a, an asymptomatic case um, the second thing we do is start to work out what that child's experience has been in school how big is the bubble that they're in most of our bubbles are not bigger than 30 for example um, then we start to talk with that child about who their social contacts might be, who do they sit with at lunchtime, who do they walk to school with, um, how do they get home, those sorts of things. And then we close down that bubble. Where it starts to get complicated is that when there is a second case or a third, we also then want to be sure that those are not linked to the previous case in any way. 
Um, so far, we have been able to um, shut our bubbles and have them return two weeks later without a connected case. Um, so what that tells us is that the measures that we have in place are secure and that the contact tracing that we do is reliable. We can close it down quickly, we can stop the transmission and other students can continue to attend school in the meantime. And I think that's the key, um, the key balance really that schools are all finding themselves in. We all want children in school. We absolutely agree that um, there are risks, of course, in terms of the virus itself, but there are risks to young people of them not being in school. So the balancing act between making sure that they can come to school and that we can manage any positive case safely is the challenge for all heads. So far, I have to say um, that on each occasion, we have been able to stop transmission at the point of that case being identified. So I'm very, very confident in our processes and procedures. I know that other schools are having a similar experience in terms of the support they get from Tameside and from Greater Manchester. Um, and I'm confident that the balance is, is right and that schools are a safe place for children to come and, and, uh, and continue with their learning.